I see calls for unity quite often. It's the hot new topic, right? It's the hot topic everybody's talking about. That we need to be unified. That division is the true enemy. And unity is the countermeasure against that enemy. And I agree. <clears throat> but identifying a problem is not the same as solving it. How do you achieve unity? A complex question to be sure. What does unity even look like? After all, to declare that you've solved the problem in one, you have to know what the solution and the win condition even looks like. Well, to me, I would say that unity is people living and allowing others to live the way they choose without direct malicious interference. Now, I'm not saying this that like I'm some kind of capital L libertarian <clears throat> who believes in, you know, the abolition of the federal U.S. government and that's how we're going to achieve unity and this and that. I'm not saying that everything a person does that does not have immediate, observable, measurable impact upon others is necessarily something that people should be allowed to do under the law, you know. Certain dangerous drugs are illegal, for example, maybe not because the person taking that drug is inherently harming someone else by doing so, <clears throat> but because the risk that that altered state of mind is going to cause them to harm others, or that the harm that they're going to inflict on others by overdosing and dying the emotional and mental harm they're going to cause on others is a harm that's not t directly tangible and not inherent to the simple act of, you know, shooting up heroin, for example. But allowing people to live and to believe as they choose without direct malicious in interference is what unity looks like to me. So how do we achieve this? Well... Unity in and of itself, however, there has to be a specific kind of unity, right? I believe that we that there has to be voluntarily voluntary unity, right? Because unity itself isn't automatically a good thing. <clears throat> the Russian army in World War II was fairly unified. Soldiers were following their orders. They were fighting against Nazi Germany. But how many of them were doing it willingly, and how many of them were doing it to not get shot and killed by their own army? They were unified, to be sure. Because anyone who deserted, well, they just got shot. Consensus objectors, shot and killed, executed, on the battlefield, before even going into the conflict zone. If you were to ask a... An Islamic terrorist, right? Not your typical run-of-the-mill celebrates Ramadan and, and runs a grocery store Muslim. A jihadi terrorist. What unity? You know, why, why can't we just have unity, right? Their response would be, well, we can have unity. We just need everybody else to convert to Islam and believe what we believe, worship our God, follow our beliefs and customs, you know? Your regular run-of-the-mill Joe Schmo, you know, Muslim engineer can have unity with his community without the rest of his community necessarily being Muslim. But if you were to ask a, a jihadi terrorist, you know, what, what, why can't we just have unity? Why can't we all be united? Well, they'd say, well, we can if you just convert to our religion, our beliefs, our doctrines.
If you were to ask an Antifa demonstrator why we can't have unity, they would tell you, oh, well, we can. You just have to give in to all our demands. You have, we have to all be anti-fascist. You, you, you just have to, <clears throat> you just have to accept our ideology, our doctrine, our way of life, and do what we say is right. And then we'll all be unified, because we'll all be Antifa. If you were to ask the average Twitter user why we can't have unity, they would tell you, well, we can. You just have to vote for the political candidate I vote for. And hold these ideas. And you have to, you know, share this hashtag. You have to believe this person who is accusing someone else of a, of a, of a sexual crime without question or evidence. Throw away the presumption of innocence. And just, you know, do what we say. If everyone were like me, we could be unified. I was watching a video, recent video by Smarter Every Day, in which he interviewed a four-star general about <clears throat> multi-domain operations and how in addition to land, sea, and air in warfare, there's now the cyber and, and, and human domains, right? There's a cyber domain and space domain. Those are recognized. And then the general said there's also the human domain. And Smarter Every Day himself uh, said that um, division is, the, is the, the, the new enemy, the true enemy, and that the countermeasure was unity. I guess my question then to that would be, <clears throat> he was talking about us versus them and how we see it on the internet, but we don't want to really dive into it and, 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 and examine that it's happening, right? But I guess my question then, if we're going to achieve unity, if we're going to achieve peace, avoid conflict, if we're going to win, how do we identify who is the us and who is the them? Well, or how do I identify who's the, who is working for the right thing and who's working against the right thing? How do we define the, the heroes and the villains, the good guys and the baddies, so to speak? And my proposal is this. I want people of other religious beliefs, other political beliefs. I want Jews, Muslims, atheists, Christians, Republicans, conservatives, libertarians, Democrats, liberals, <clears throat> to live their lives the way they believe is right. To not interfere with me living the way I believe is right. And to trust in the institution of, of, of human interaction. Not necessarily just democracy, right? We see this all the time on the news. On Twitter things being called threats to our democracy when they're actually quite the opposite. See, that's the deception in the, in the division, right? <clears throat> that's the deception in the division. They'll t they, they will threaten our democracy and they will look at the things that are the democracy and call them the threats to, to democracy. Accuse your enemy of that which you are doing, right? Amazon's coming out with this new movie, just from the trailers, I can already tell you it's going to be a bunch of anti-Republican, anti-Trump, anti-conservative, anti-American, really, anti-human propaganda from the divisors, the subverters, the enemy. At least that's my belief. But in closing, if we're going to fight 
a divisive enemy, if we're going to fight the enemy that is division with the countermeasure that is unity, how do we identify who is the division and who is the unity? And I think the, the simple litmus test that I propose is look who has the open extended hand. Look who is the conservative, Christian, Republican, white, cisgender male extending a hand and saying, look, bro, I ju I'm just trying to live my life. I'm just trying to feed myself, live my life, do what I'm trying to do. And I'm not trying to interfere with anybody else's business unless I have a good faith belief that their business is going to then interfere with other people's business and so on and so forth. But I'm trying to have you live your life as long as it's not as long as it's not uh, infringing on my rights or the rights of anyone else that I can see. And I just want you to do the same. My hand's out. My hand's out to you. Because I want to achieve unity not through force, not under a single banner of a religion or a nation or a political ideology, not under the flag of Antifa or the Republican elephant, or even necessarily the flag of the United States if I'm, if I'm talking to an international audience right now. Because right now, I see my way of life as being threatened. I see the American way of life as being threatened. And I have a good faith belief that I'm not the one threatening it. I'm seeing other people doing that. So look at people like me. Look at any Republican or Democrat or Christian or Muslim or man or woman or white person or Latino or black person or Asian. Look at anybody who's got their hands out and say, hey, let's do this together. Let's trust the institutions, and if the institutions themselves may have problems here and there, well, you know what, let's all get together and if we can agree that there's a problem and a solution to fix it, sure, but if we can't even agree that there's a problem with the system in the first place, let's go with the status quo until, you know, we can prove that there's some kind of harm being done. But let's, let's use the systems of democracy, getting the people with the right ideas into these positions of power, the keys, the keys to the treasure and the control, like uh, CGP Gray was talking about in his uh, Rules for Dictators. Let's give the right people the keys, and let's just do this together. And everybody's going to have to live with something they don't personally like. Every fundamentalist Christian, every Muslim, every LGBT person, every um, everyone is going to have to live with the existence of something with which they personally disagree. We're just going to have to live with the existence of things that we, with which we don't personally agree. And that's the key. Can you live with something that you don't personally disagree with or do you want to eradicate it on the basis that you disagree with it and therefore think it's evil do you think something that you disagree with is inherently evil do you want to see things you don't like torn down burned down destroyed metaphorically or literally if that's the case i think it's uh, pretty safe to you know slap that divisor label on you and call you the enemy but regardless of your race, your religion, your nationality, your ethnic background, your gender, your sexual orientation or identity, your political beliefs, regardless of anything of that, uh, uh, like that, if you can look at something you personally disagree with and say, well, I can't prove that this thing is actively harming anyone, I can't prove beyond a reasonable doubt they're causing harm and accuse them with proof beyond a reasonable doubt that they're being harmful, therefore I'm just going to have to live with its existence. If you can't do that, I think it's time to slap that enemy label on you and say, you can change and be part of the unity or you can be gone.
But if you're like me, and you just want to extend an open hand and say, bro, just live and let me live. Yeah, there's going to be things that capital L libertarians are going to disagree with, like the existence of the federal government, taxes, roads, uh, public fire departments, schools, you know, things like that. But, <clears throat> and I'm being facetious, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm ragging on libertarians as a, as a bit of a joke, but in all seriousness, if you can extend your hand and say, bro, just live, just let me live, and don't try to submert, subvert my culture, don't try to change who I am to suit your desires, your beliefs, what you want me to be, let me be me, let you be you, and if somebody's hurting somebody, sure, we can get together and solve that issue. Even that, even then, that's not a perfect solution, I guess, because a lot of people think there's harm being done where I don't think there is. And a lot of people will say that, you know, I'm the one being harmful. People will say speech is violence. People will say that by simply existing as a white Christian male, I'm committing violence against somebody by being male, let alone white let alone Christian. I think those people, the ones who say, who look at labels and call those labels evil, I think that's the people that we can just slap that name tag on them and say, you're the enemy. But people like me who just want to extend an open hand and say, look, bro, I don't care that you're, I don't care that you're Muslim. I don't care that you're gay. You know, I may not agree with your political beliefs, or even your religion. There may be things very important to you that I just don't agree with. But if they're important to you, man, you do you. As long as you're not hurting anybody. If you're a Muslim and you just want to run your store or do contractor work, be an engineer, feed your family, whatever, dude, like, that's you. Let's do it. Let's do it. And I'm going to be me over here. This straight, white, cisgender, Christian male archetypical fascist and I just want to live like that the same way you are so I believe that I'm part of the force for good that I'm part of the unity and I believe that these actors in Hollywood these woke people on Twitter these political actors who just want to throw fits and not work and do their job for years while making things up and screaming for a shift in the system trying to grab power based on things they made up I think they're the enemy and I think that by banding together and accepting uh that we can be different but still unified in our ability to live life as we choose and allow others to do the same that countermeasure can work but the trick is I've already got my hand open this can only work if you take the next step and grasp it so if you have a different religion a different lifestyle, different political beliefs than me. If you're not a Republican or a conservative or a Christian or maybe not even American, maybe maybe English isn't your first language and, and your language is something you consider integral to your identity like we're, like, like you know, uh, Skullface and Metal Gear Solid Five talking about language being the true integral part of a person's identity. Maybe that has merit. But either way, my hand's out. You can save our world by taking it and shaking it. Or you can throw a Molotov at me or call me rude names on Twitter or try to get my videos taken down and my speech suppressed and doom our entire world. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like what I'm saying. But if you try to destroy it and get rid of it, you're dooming our entire world. 
This is North Sea Hero signing out.